What is going on, YouTube? It is Pete coming in hot with another video. Also known as that guy, Pete, you refuse to invite to gatherings. So you've probably noticed for the past two videos, I have begun something of a small series. Uh, I do want to cover all the various aspects of the manosphere. And the manosphere, as you all know, is just an overarching space that contains many different subsets, such as MGTOW, PUAs, uh, MRAs, uh, incels, also known as True Force, Loneliness, TFLs, um, Red Pill, Black Pill, so on and so forth. So I want to really go through today how um, the MRAs essentially answer the question that we always talk about, which is, okay, we have this increase in modern women, decrease in traditional women, the deregulated sexual marketplace, and how times have changed as a result of this. How are the MRAs going to address this? And then we're going to break it up into the different types of MRAs. You're going to see that some of them are a little bit more in agreement with other aspects of the manosphere. While some of them, there kind of is a, a purplish, bluish type tint um, to, to what, they, what they believe and what they think. So we're going to go through all those different groups. Um, we're going to talk about, I guess, um, you know, what the, what the thoughts are on this um, from my perspective. And then um, I guess also, again, because the incels... Whenever you're dealing with talking to women about these topics, what women will tend to do, again, which is why I constantly talk about what the incels think and then what they think of the incels. Because a lot of women, when you debate these topics with them, they will take the incel label without understanding what it is. I think I'm going to put the incel as the next video, perhaps. Uh, and they just kind of brand us all that way without really understanding what the terms mean. They mean it as an insult, but they don't really understand what they are actually calling a guy when they call him an insult. So I guess we'll cover that in the next video. But today we're going to talk about MRAs. And um, of course, you know, I got the wiki open, of course, and we're going to talk about the different political factions within the MRA and all that stuff. So without further ado, let's get started. What is the problem MRAs seek to solve again it's the same as the MGTOWs and the PUAs we have this increase in modern women this decrease in traditional women we have a deregulated marketplace and we have a bunch of laws and things like this that cater to gynocentrism and things like this and um yeah it's a direct result of the increase in the modern and the decrease in the traditional so what is the MRA's answer to the question the MRA's answer to the question is, um, we're not going to do what the, the MGTOWs do. We're not going to just ignore it, quit the system, and go our own way on this. We're not going to try to game the system like the PUAs are trying to do. What we're going to do is we're going to try to change the system. And we're going to fight for men's rights. And we're going to try to get the laws changed so that it's more equitable for both men and women and it's more fair. Because remember, there are things you cannot control, such as Ooga Booga. You can tame it with nurture, but there are things you can control, like the laws that are in place in the first place, which is a form of nurture. Law is a way to tame our nature. So you can control that. Okay? So that's pretty much how they're going to approach it and the simplest definition of an mra because again you want to just kind of um you want to just kind of put it out there mras put simply are just men who are anti-misandry they're anti-misandry um they believe that society is gynocentric and favors women over men and they want to eliminate this gynocentrism and kind of tame the ooga booga with nurture so that maybe we could have more awareness of male disposability 
and maybe not treat it as such by taming our nature. That's pretty much the definition of what an MRA is and what they do. So in terms of the different types of MRAs, um, well, I did do a little bit of um, reading up on it just so I can understand. And obviously, since MRAs, unlike the previous two videos, is a political faction, right? No surprise when you go from left to right, there are different gradations of where these guys fall. So there are um, there are basically, you know, excuse me, there are MRAs that are libertarian traditional conservatives, which is kind of an interesting term in and of itself. There are MRAs that are socialist and left winger. There are some MRAs that are in really dangerous territory. They are white nationalists and white supremacists, basically JBW supremacists. Um, and then there are the, the neoliberals. That would be what we're going to explore slightly from the political perspective. Okay. So I want to get that out of the way too, because you can't talk about a rights movement without talking about the politics. So that's going to be the different the newcomer to the format of this video. And then after that, we're going to talk about the subgroups. For example, Father's Rights, uh, Mance Activists, which is about basically anti-circumcision movement, um, the sexual trad cons, which is like m the MRAs who take a more, um, I guess, traditional approach to it, sex-positive MRAs, um, they kind of take a more progressive approach to it, uh, the liberal feminist MRAs, uh, the anti-domestic abuse MRAs, and then the medical men's movement. Okay? Um, definitely, it doesn't cover everything, but we're going to try to cover as much as we can because this is a little bit more to unpack. So let's just get started now with the political factions. So let's start with the libertarian traditional conservatives. So um, this is probably the most prominent faction out there. Uh, it kind of goes hand in hand with MGTOW in the sense that it's like, look, man, as a libertarian, I have the right to make my choices. And as long as my choices don't harm anyone else, it doesn't affect anyone else's life. I should be able to do that. And I think they look at a lot of these laws, especially family court and things like this, where the government imposes things on men, but they don't really impose those same things on women. So, yeah. What ends up happening is um, you have this rift between the MRAs and the feminists. A lot of feminists, they like to say that MGTOW is the opposite of feminism. I disagree. MRAs is the opposite of feminism, I would say. Um, so, yeah, I mean, good examples. Again, I have the wiki open. Some good examples if you just want names of people that are worth checking out. Libertarian Tradcon MRAs. Allison Tyman is one. Natty Kadifa, it's two. Turd Flinging Monkey, some of you have definitely heard of Turd Flinging Monkey. Karen Strawn, I've mentioned her a few times. I like her a lot. She's really cool. Um, and Paul Elam, which is an ear for men. He was also in the Red Pill documentary with uh, Cassie J. So, of course, it's exactly as you sound. It's like, okay, we're looking to change the system, but what kind of approach should we take? Well, we value traditionalism, like a conservative would, for example, but at the end of the day, we also agree that men and women alike, like, listen, make whatever choices you want, but government stay the hell out of it. Stay out of my family. Stay out of my relationship. Stay out of my house. Don't get involved in my shit. That's basically the libertarian tradcon political faction of the MRAs. Next, again, no surprise with the millennials and all this stuff, you know, you have these uh, feminine soy boy type guys and things like this. There are MRAs who are trying to kind of purple pill it and reconcile it with this socialist left winger type deal. Um, okay, and it looks like we have some examples here. Tom Ramsey, Belfort Bax, Analyzing Male Slavery, uh, Coltane, Razorblade Candy 2, Trevor Cormier, and Pro Male Revolutionary. These are guys who tend to lean left on the spectrum. And again, obviously, you kind of lose credibility when you don't make any concessions in the other side, which is why, honestly, I prefer libertarian type mindset 
because I think libertarian is only the, the most reasonable one here because they just say like, hey, um, do what you want as long as you're not hurting anybody else. Who cares? And government, mind your business. While left wingers, they, they might say something like, you know, well, I am pro all the progressive stuff and all this stuff, but I think men should be a part of that progressiveness. But what the socialists and left wingers don't understand is that by making a progressive system where we operate based on feelings and emotions and things like this, you're giving the keys um, to emotion and not rationality. So it's going to lead to the fall of Rome scenario we always talk about. So again, socialism, left winging, like over the top progressivism, which I always talk is regressivism in a lot of ways. Because it, it opposes the traditionalism we've built to ch tame our ooga booga and make this whole intersex relations thing worth it. Socialism um, as an idea, it, uh, it sounds great on paper. Sounds great. But um, that's just not how ooga booga works. Again, you can't override ooga booga. You can tame it, which traditionalism kind of does. You can control it a little bit, which capitalism tries to regulate it a little bit. But you can't override it like socialism and communism seek to do. You get very undesirable results. Just ask anyone who's lived in the Eastern Bloc and then came to America what they think about that. But in the particular context of intersex relations, it's obvious that progressivism is not the answer. So I think this particular sect of MRAs, again, they're kind of in that blue pill slash purple pill kind of area. Well, they'll admit that, hey, MR, not MRAs, um, they'll admit that men kind of have a raw deal in some instances, but they, they want to reconcile it with, with this idealist utopia type shit they have over here, and you can't do it. So I think the socialists and left-wingers are wrong. Also, on the other side, the JBW nationalists and supremacists, such as apparently Roger Devlin's a good example, apparently. Um, yeah, this guy is the opposite direction <laughs> when traditionalism goes too far. Again, this guy probably it is a solution in his eyes, but it's not a really good one. Again, to get a um, to get a um, a good movement going, you don't want to ostracize all the other races. You, you don't want to do that. So obviously, uh, this whole you know white nationalist, white supremacist, basically the opposite of socialist and left winger, this overly um, alt right type situation, that's also um, not conducive to what we're trying to do, which is to change the system in such a way where it is more equitable for men and women alike of all races, not just JBW. I don't think there's really anything else really to say about that particular movement. But the last one is the neoliberals. Um, so this is like Warren Farrell. This guy was also on the, um, the Cassie J um, documentary, The Red Pill, which I encourage you to watch. It's, it was a very good documentary. I also encourage you to watch Divorce Corp. That's a good one, too. Um, but basically it's the idea of, Hey, free market is going to be what it's going to be. That type of deal, like government stay out of it. Kind of like the libertarian idea, but it's going to be what it's going to be. Again, it depends on what they mean here. Cause if they mean like, Hey, you know, we're not going to have social norms and social stigmas and things like this. Well, now you're back to square one. You have the deregulated marketplace and the problem goes unsolved. And that's obviously something we don't want. But if he's saying like, no, social stigma, social norms and things like this, um, all that should be in place. It's just kind of like, hey, the, the government should just kind of screw off. Then I would say guys like Warren Farrell and people like Karen Strawn and Paul Ellum, they probably have more in common than they think. And perhaps this whole neoliberal type deal um, they should probably just get absorbed into the libertarian. And I think when you kind of bring this up in the macro sense, politically speaking, you tend to have people who are on the left. It's because it's very divided. They're on the left, you know, socialist, communist, you know, progressive, all this stuff. And then on the right, you have these you have equally, you know, just freaking crazies that are like, no, JBW reigns supreme. And, uh, you know, we got to have everything 
you know, overly traditional to the point of like over course correcting this, that, and the third. And then you kind of just have libertarians in the middle that are just kind of um, just laughing at both of them. Like, like y'all are both stupid. Uh, you just, it's just a bottom line. Like th these are my rights. These are my boundaries. Uh, government fuck off. Like, like it's really that simple. Um, let, let me just do what I want. And as long as I'm not hurting other people, case closed. The only danger is that some people may use the, as long as I'm not hurting anyone, right? Because those are like the strong words here and try to twist it and say things like, well, I'm not really hurting anyone when I do this, that, and the third, when they actually are hurting someone. Yeah, sure. You're not, you're not shanking somebody, but you might be hurting them psychologically, emotionally, and things like this. And you have to consider that as well when looking at the definition of, you know, libertarianism, like as long as I'm not hurting anyone. Back in the day, I used to be on a lot of the libertarian pages. Um, back when I was on social media, Liberty Memes, probably one of the most hilarious pages ever. Because they just, again, they just tell it how it is. Sometimes they get a little insensitive and cold. You kind of expect that on the internet, though. But, um, yeah. Honestly, out of all these political factions, thankfully, the biggest one is the libertarian approach. You know, common sense. And um, I'm glad it is. While these other ones are definitely much smaller by comparison, and hopefully they kind of either start to understand where the libertarians are coming from and kind of jump on board with them, or they should just drop out of the race altogether, like the JBW people who are just, they're freaking crazy. They're out of their minds. So that addresses the political elephant in the room, okay? So now I think we can comfortably talk about the different types of MRAs, like what are the causes that they fight for, that they champion. Because an MRA, like, you can break it up. Just like we break up the MGTOWs between, you know, the LTR types, the free agents, the monks, and, um, you know, just the people where they, they're they just completely out of it altogether. Um, we also have the breakup of the different types of MRAs. So the MRAs... Um, it's entirely based on political cause. So the first type we're going to talk about is father's rights movement. It's exactly as it sounds. One of the biggest things that you are always going to see, not just in MGTOW spaces, not just in red pill spaces, but in MRA spaces as well, this idea of father's rights. How marriage is heavily, heavily skewed against men. And... Because we have no-fault divorce, right, there's no nurture taming the ooga booga, and you got these women with high body counts getting married, and there's an alpha imprint somewhere else, women can basically end the marriage based on feelings, on tingles, how I feel. You're not Chad, so I'm just going to leave you, and I still think at age 40, I can, I can pull something. Yes, you can pull a Chad to, to get with you, but you can't get a Chad to commit. That's the delusion. But um, what they want to do is essentially they want to divorce you, take your money, alimony, take your child support if you have kids, and then go and bang the Chad. So that way they get the alpha seed and beta need at the same time fulfilled. And the court system is set up to facilitate this so much so that lawyers will tell, they will tell the women like, hey, just say you signed the prenup under duress if there is a prenup. Just say he abused you. Just say he was a bad father. Just say all these things. Family court is not like criminal court, right? It's a very dirty game where the judges get paid out, the lawyers get paid out, and the woman gets paid out. There is the 3% of cases where the woman makes a lot more money than the man, like Halle Berry and Kelly Clarkson, where the guy gets paid out. It is wrong there, too. And the MRAs, believe it or not, they're fighting just as much for those people who got screwed, the 3%, as the 97%. Because we don't divide along gender lines. We want equality. So, I mean, just someone, if you're looking for like a prominent father's rights advocate, um, apparently Jordan Holbrook, a uh, British men's rights advocate. He's probably one of the bigger names out there. So if you want to just kind of learn more about it, uh, you could do so. And another subset in father's rights movements um, that you should be considering is paternity fraud. That's another big thing. Baby entrapment. Um, if a woman ha gets pregnant... She has all the authority to, to abort the baby, um, and basically, there's no responsibility there. But if she wants to keep the baby, 
she still has the authority to keep the baby, but the man is left holding the bag with the responsibility of financially supporting. So the man doesn't have a choice, but the woman has a choice. That's a problem too. That's what this father's rights movement is all about. Addressing these things so that it is more equitable and fair. And remember, law is nurture, not nature. So we can change nurture, but we can't change nature. But we can tame it. And that's father's rights movement. Next is the uh, Mant activists. So the Mant activists, um, basically, this is about um, male sex rights, in a way, um, and also protecting um, the sanctity of of male privates. Basically, this idea of um, forced circumcision, it should be a man's right, um, and parents obviously should not impose that. Um, again, we talk we talk about this sometimes, like in the Middle East, like um, they will forcefully mutilate female, you know, privates as well. So again, it's wrong there and it's wrong here. You should not impose these things on people is the point. And that's what that particular Manta activist part, the second faction, is all about. They focus on that. Um, you also have the uh, the sexual traditional conservatives. Uh, basically, um, this idea that men should offer more than women do when bartering for sex. And it's already like that. It's already like that. It's uh, basically men offering resources that then women offer in the form of like job security and things like this. And in exchange, you get box. But again, we talk about this all the time. Men weren't unwilling to do that. They were willing to bring the attraction. They were willing to bring the protection, the masculinity, the provisioning and the character. They were willing to bring that to the table. But in exchange, you got to bring the beauty, the femininity, the modesty and the character. But again, when that's not happening, you get the sexual tradcons who have to talk about this shit. And on the flip side of that, you have the sexually positive MRAs. They're in, they're basically the opposite of the sexual tradcon. Basically, they just kind of hold this belief that sex is necessary to the psychological well-being of those with a high sex drive and that sex should be made a human right. Notable sex positive MRAs include Ivy Passion, who's a Dutch porn star. So, the only people who would believe that sex should be a fundamental right are probably people who aren't getting it regularly. And I'm not saying that as an ad hom. There's a reason I'm saying it. Again, because if you're someone who just gets sex regularly, then you don't have a problem. So you don't even have you don't. It doesn't even occur to you that it should be a right. But it's interesting that. <laughs> A female porn star is the one that thinks sex should be a right. Now, here's the thing. I do not believe as a as a man that sex is necessary um, for the biological well-being. Busting <laughs> is necessary. We would agree on this. But psychologically, perhaps, um, ha again, because here's the thing. As someone who has a spicy film addiction, I can tell you that, yeah, biologically, you're fulfilled. You're fine. But you're not, you're not, you know, again, you're pair bonded to a computer screen and there's no real intimacy or, or a uh, passion or connection there. Like there's commitment to a computer screen, but there's no passion or intimacy. There's nothing really there. So I would say that, um, yeah, sex is definitely going to help your psychological health for sure. It absolutely will. But the fact that it should be a right, I don't know. It's like saying healthcare is a right. I mean, is it? I don't know. But what I would say is that um, I definitely would disagree probably with the the sex positive MRAs. I think definitely the sexual trad cons um, are, are more on point here. But um, in terms of how we can realistically have a sexual trad con type arrangement with this current problem of the increase in the modern woman who's body positive, sexually liberated with high body count, uh, masculine boss babe, morally bankrupt. You can't really make a tradcon type deal with a woman like that. And as a result, I mean, this is why the MGTOWs, the free agents are pumping and dumping. 
or checking out altogether a Volcel. It's not surprising. Okay, so that's the next group. Um, and then we have the liberal feminist MRAs. Interesting. So basically, um, yeah, this is just the belief that women will behave generously towards men in the right circumstances. If by right circumstances, you mean he's Chad, <laughs> then yeah, sure, in the right circumstances, she will be generous towards him. And a normie who has a good book summary on the back and good contents in the book, yeah, she'll behave generously towards him. But incels do not have the correct circumstances. Um, so the MRAs, apparently, they believe in abortion. Versus maybe a trad a tradcon uh, MRA would not. I personally believe that there are exceptions. Of course, there are circumstances where, like, for example, if it would kill the mother to give birth. Okay. Um, you know, even though if they, she got R-worded or something like this, um, yeah, it should be in the toolbox. It should be on the table. Um, but, you know, there's still the morning after pill. But um, I think the uncomfortable part about talking about the whole abortion thing is this, okay? It should be in the toolbox, but unfortunately, it's being used um, as, like, the go-to. Like, they're saying, hey, here's the exceptional circumstances, but in reality, most women who are getting abortions, it's to dodge responsibility. Yes, ladies, it hurts. I know. I know. It's okay to not be ready for a kid, but just understand there's birth control, there's there's morning after pills. But again, when we get into this conversation, it's like I'm giving you all the authority. I as in the law. I'm not the law, but you understand what I'm saying. The law is giving you the authority to make any of these decisions you want. Any of the decisions you want. You could take a birth control pill, you could take a morning after pill and all this stuff. But then when people look at you like, oh my God, you're making baby egg and cheese at the clinic. There's responsibility attached to that choice that you made. You have to take responsibility for the fact you made that choice. Then it's like, no, no, I don't want the responsibility. And it's like, what? As the gatekeeper of sex, like, like what? It's just kind of leaving the question marks. You know that meme where the guy's kind of like, what? And there's question marks all over his head. It's kind of like one of those moments. Yeah. So, yeah, um, that's definitely a thing. Um, so notable liberal feminist MRAs include Mel Feet. And again, Warren Farrell, he's kind of in this camp, like this neoliberal. So I guess maybe this is the difference between him and the libertarian person, because the libertarian person would be like, no, abortion is is not a right. You know, you're you're taking you're snuffing out a potential life. You can say it's cells. Sure. But those cells would have become a life and you extinguish that potential. But um, yeah, the move towards rightism in the MRA sphere is separate from the move away from feminism. I agree. Um, there's de again, for example, the JBW people, those are the ones that are going way off the deep end on the right. Right. But then there's people that are like here's feminism kind of all the way on the left. They're moving away, trying to get to this middle ground libertarian space. I agree. So it seems the difference between the liberal feminist and MRA and say, you know, a Tradcon MRA is that they sort of have this idea that, hey, you know, abortion is a right. You know, we support women's rights and all this. And it's like, listen, yes. Of course, absolutely, we're looking for equality here, but it's kind of weird when you have this particular abortion debate where one person gets all the authority and the other one's left with the bag holding all the responsibility, when it should be the person with the authority also should have the responsibility. Anti-domestic abuse MRAs. This is the next group. So obviously, domestic abuse is a serious thing. Nobody should be domestically abusing anybody, period. But what they don't tell you is this. They don't tell you that men get domestically abused just as much as women and that women are more likely to initiate it because, again, when you ha live in a society with the stigmas and norms that say, I can hit this guy and I know he's not going to hit me back because it's socially unacceptable for him to hit me back, you're more inclined to initiate. This kind of makes sense. But what mainstream will do is they'll take the magnifying glass, they'll put it over Rihanna's black eye. And then if some other guy, something happens to him, they, they just brush that under the rug. In an equal society, we got to look at both. We got to take both equally seriously. 
This is also true not just with domestic abuse, but like, let's say, workplace sexual harassment and sexual assault and things like this, right? If it happens to a girl, yes, take it seriously, 100%, 100%. But when it happens to a guy, you got to take it seriously too. Not like, oh, she's just like that with everybody. You can't do that. You got to take it seriously when the guy files the complaint too. And I think also we got to get back to the basics where we've clearly defined harassment, um, assault, and R word. Like just the basics of what it is. Okay. Harassment is usually just words. Assault means like I'm touching and R word. Well, you already know what that means. Right. But now we're kind of in this like me too era where it's like, hey, based on how I feel about you in terms of attractiveness, I'm going to determine if this is harassment, a assault or R word. Right. Again, making laws and rules and conventions based on feelings instead of logic and rationality. This causes problems, especially when society takes it seriously when it's bullshit. But when it's real, it's real. So again, we just kind of have to have the wisdom when looking at it on a case by case basis to know what's what. So yeah, and someone who is really working against the uh, domestic violence is Mark Angelucci. Um, so I think this guy was also on um, Red Pill with Cassie J. So a lot of these guys we're talking about here, they're on her film. So you can really just kind of get the cliff notes on all this stuff from that movie. So I do encourage you to watch it. And then last but not least is the medical men's movement, which is a subgroup of MRAs who recognize that men face unique medical issues like prostate cancer, testicular cancer, and things like this. And I think um, Dr. Greg Canning is a huge proponent of this. Again, there's a breast cancer walk. There's not a ball cancer walk. There's not a prostate cancer walk. So this idea that men's medical problems because of the disposability of men is not taken as seriously as female problems. Again, that kind of lends credence to the gynocentrism of it all. How come the NFL players don't wear, uh, I don't know, what what the cup? Do, does prostate cancer even have a ribbon? Like, I don't even know. But the point is, yeah, medical men's movement, uh, that's a thing. Men's medical issues that are unique to men need to be taken just as seriously as women's issues. So again, just the, the political subgroups here, we talked about them. We said that there were the libertarian tradcons, which is the biggest one, the socialist and left-wingers, which is a smaller one, the JBW nationalists and supremacists, a really small one, and then the neoliberals, which kind of hold like this... Um, like, hey, we're not going to change anything about the women's side, but we're just going to add to the men's side. Um, that's kind of like the political spectrum, while the actual types of MRAs are the MRAs that fight against um, injustices against fathers, basically fathers' rights movement. Man's activists, which have to do with um, preserving men's privates, things like this. Um, the sexual rights of men which can be broken up into the Tradcon camp or the sex positive camp. Um, the liberal feminist MRAs. So basically a, an MRA who also identifies as a feminist, basically a, um, a purple pillish type MRA, the anti-domestic abuse MRAs, which probably could umbrella um, the me too and the harassment and the assault and the R word and all that stuff. That's all kind of packed in there as well. And then finally, the medical men's movement. So we have basically six different types of um, of things going on here. And that pretty much covers that. So now, of course, we're going to top it off now by saying, hey, what do the incels think about these guys? And what do these guys think about the incels? So I got the incel wiki open for this relationship to the incelosphere. So the most incel intersectionalist group of MRAs are the sex positive MRAs. Which means that like, uh, obviously, if you're not getting sex, you're more inclined to find that you may have an incorrect conclusion that sex is a fundamental right because you don't get it. You think it has to be a right so that you have to get it. When really what you should be doing is taking accountability and implementing solutions such as hard looks, maxing, soft looks, maxing, so on and so on and so on to get yourself to the point where you can get in and stop being an incel. You ascend, as we call it in the black pill space. Most MRAs are not incels. They're normies. And they advocate for increased male reproductive rights 
and incels would agree with MRAs. They also want that, as they have no reproductive choice at all, involuntarily celibate. Now, MRAs such as Warren Farrell, the neoliberal camp, have advocated for women to initiate dates, um, think Sadie Hawkins Day, more so that men carry less emotional burden in this area. That's never going to happen, though, because women are wired to avoid social disapproval at all costs, and rejection is the embodiment of that social disapproval. Because remember, social disapproval in Uga Booga days meant exile from tribe, your bear lunch. Being in a modern civilization does not undo Uga Booga. But okay, fair enough. It's a, it's, it's a nice pipe dream. It sounds good, but it's never going to happen en masse. Unless you're Chad. She'll approach Chad, but she ain't going to approach a normie. It is what it is. Now, he has also complained about the amount that men have to approach women before sexual intercourse. Saying that the dating system for men is double jeopardy, where he must not only do the asking, he must pay extra for risking extra rejection. Um, again, yes, I think incels would agree with this as well, that yes, men do take on a, an excess emotional burden. Um, but again, because we are not wired to avoid rejection at all costs, uh, maybe as a nurture, as a product of environment, we may avoid rejection due to our experiences, a product of our environment. It's not like women where it's like basically hardwired in to avoid social disapproval at all costs. We kind of understood that, and that's why we take on the risk of rejection. And you're going to find as a man, the more rejection you take on, it's going to suck at first. You might even go through some RP or BP rage and depression, but eventually you're going to accept it and just be like, yeah, rejection is hardly the worst thing in the world. Men get told no all the time. You can't even count. So you kind of just have to take it, which take it in stride. It is what it is. Because the probability that a woman is going to approach a normie is low. It could happen. But it's low. And if you are going to get approached by a woman, just understand you're probably going to get approached by a woman who's below your looks match. It is what it is. But it's mostly chads getting approached by everybody because of social media and dating apps. Makes women think that they may be a nine when really they're a four. So if everyone thinks they're a nine, they're only going to exclusively approach eights, nines, and tens. They're not going to approach you, the normie. Which is why your parents had an easier time pre-internet days. So, yeah. Also, uh, famous MRA, the feminist MRA, Mel Feet on TV once screamed to an audience of women that men feel discriminated all the time due to women being sexual selectors. But women are sexual selectors. It's hypergamy. You can't fight it. So there's no point in just bitching, pissing, and moaning about hypergamy. It's nature. You can tame it so that maybe instead of the top 10 to 20% of guys, maybe like the top 40%. Which, historically speaking, 40% of men have reproduced in all of human history. You can get that. And then as a you know bottom guy, you, you can try to figure out how to get to that 40%. That's a little bit more realistic than trying to be top 20. So I think incels are pretty much in agreement with MRAs for the most part. Um, I think they, they, again, men having more rights to kind of make things more, more fair... Um, I think that's um, that's very, very, very important. And I don't think incels would disagree with that. However, on the flip side, I think MRAs, they should probably share the same opinion of incels as the MGTOWs and the, the uh, PUAs. That incels are just these bitter, angry, depressed, like just unload all the ad homs, just unload it all onto them. Because they just don't understand the experience of what it's like that no matter how hard you try, you can't get laid. They just, they, they don't get it. And for a long time, I didn't get it either. But then I started talking to these guys and listening to what they had to say. And it was like, holy shit, is it really that bad? And they're like, dude, we're not bullshitting you. It really is that bad. And it's like, damn. So no surprise that MRAs kind of share the MGTOW and PUA opinion of incels. But incels, probably out of all three of these that I've covered in the past three days, MRAs, PUAs, and MGTOWs, um, they seem to kind of share some sort of common ground with MRAs the most. Because how are you going to argue with just, you know, basic decency and basic rights for people? I mean, yeah, it is what it is. So I think after um, going over all of that, you can see that, you know, Politics plays a big role in this particular section of the Manosphere, MRAs. 
for sure. Um, but at the end of the day, you still kind of have the different approaches and the different things that MRAs want to focus on. So unlike the MGTOWs where it's just kind of like, am I going to go my own way on this? Am I going to be a free agent? Am I going to be a Volcel monk or, or the PUAs? Am I going for an LTR when I game the system? Am I just going for short-term plate spinning? Um, things like this. These guys are saying, hey, we acknowledge the same problem that PUAs and MGTOWs are, but instead of just saying, hey, I'm going to check out altogether or try to cheat the system with Game Shark and Action Replay, we're going to actually try to go through the gargantuan task of uh, rewriting the nurture to make it more equitable. And therefore, no surprise that the subsections, the basic types of MRAs, are divided based on the cause in question, be it father's rights, which is paternity fraud, um, abortion versus child support, uh, family court laws and all this shit, uh, man's activists, which is, you know, um, protection of privates and, you know, sexual rights of men. Should sex be a right? Um, should sex be um, an exchange between men and women? Like, like what is that? Um, is it just, hey, you know, we can acknowledge both the MRA and the feminist view and kind of make some middle like purple pill type deal, which I would say, um, you know, Theoretically, it sounds possible, but it's probable. I don't think so. I think by necessity, men have to lead and women follow. Um, again, and I don't mean that in like a derogatory way. I just mean that like women respect male leaders. If they're not leaders, they're just going to get disposed of. It is what it is. And then, you know, domestic abuse is another topic. And then medical men's movement, which is like, hey, take prostate cancer and ball cancer a little more seriously. Don't just like act like it's not a thing. It's a type of cancer. In fact, testicular cancer is probably the most type, common type of cancer um, among men. Um, you know, and, I, and I've been seeing an increase in such cases. So, yeah, obviously, fellas, check your parts and, uh, and be safe in that regard. And I think that's pretty much all I've got. No need to recap because I know how chapters work now. So feel free to leave a like. Feel free to leave a dislike. Call me an asshole. Leave a comment. Pete, I disagree with you because X, Y, and Z. Uh, Pete, you know what? Argument from authority. You're not a doctor. You're not a this. You're not a that. Therefore, you have no idea to talk about this. Um, Peter, you haven't gotten late since you're 19. Therefore, shut the fuck up. Whatever you got, drop it. Whatever you do, though, don't report the video. It's good information. It's definitely helping people out here. I'm probably going to continue this series. Uh, I think I'm probably going to make a um, video on how the red pill answers the question, on how the black pill answers the question, and then finally how incels answer the question. I think that covers all the factions, or rather the sections of the Manosphere. So I, I did. I tr really tried to research all the different sections, and I think that's all I've got. It's PUAs, MGTOWs, MRAs, red pill, black pill, and incels. Those are the sections. I can't think of anything else. But if you can think of another one, feel free to leave a comment. I'll, I'll look into it. And yeah, I have been that guy, Pete. You refuse to invite to gatherings. And I definitely will catch you out for the next one. But for now, I'll see you later.